Hi, I'm Sammy, aka Forshring Boy, and today I'm here to talk to you about the cool world of alternate tuning on the ukulele. Now, aside from harmonics, alternate tuning is basically what I use in pretty much all of my original music and covers. So just like I did with harmonics, I wanted to make a video on what is alternate tuning, what alternate tunings exist, and again, how I use them. Alternate tunings are great for an instrument because basically it, it's, an, it's a way of giving you a brand new sound and therefore some new inspiration if you're stuck. Uh, the weird thing about alternate tunings is, is that all your, your previous chord knowledge and chord shapes kind of goes out the window. And so that relies a lot of either trying to figure out the theory of it, but mostly just working out what sounds nice. For me, I often use it uh, because I want to achieve sounds or especially notes that are impossible on a standard tuned ukulele. So for example, if there's a low B in a song, I will detune my C string to a B, or if I'm in C minor, I'll detune my E to an E flat. It's basically a way of me achieving uh, playing covers on the ukulele and keeping them in their original key rather than trying to make it fit the ukulele. So today I'll talk to you about five of my most used and favorite alternate tunings. But before we talk about alternate tunings, we have to kind of talk about standard tuning. And when I say standard tuning on the ukulele, we actually have five of them. So before we can play alternate tuning, let's talk about what exactly is standard tuning. Okay, so here are five standard tunings that exist, uh, put into order what I think is the most common to the least common. So GCEA reentrant is more commonly known as high G tuning, and it's basically the most common tuning that you'll often find when you pick up a ukulele from a store or in the street. For me, this is what makes a ukulele a ukulele, and it's because basically it's called reentrant because our G string should be tuned an octave lower, so it kind of goes in a linear order like the top four strings of a guitar. So this actually means that our lowest string and our lowest note is on the third string, the C. So there's kind of a more limited octave range because we go C, E, G, A. But for me, as somebody who plays a lot of chord melody and uh, harmonics, uh, having the G an octave higher means I basically have one extra string to play around with melody. And also I can use that high G to kind of bleed into chords more than a low G. A low G string is very overpowering and um, left open is basically dominates. With a high G, I can leave it often open within chords and kind of create new chord sounds and shapes. Here is my low G ukulele that you just saw me strumming. Uh, apologies. At the moment, I don't actually have uh, any of my ukulele strung low G, and that's because some of you may know me as a low G racist. Uh, I don't play a lot of low G at all, um, and that's because for me personally, I don't like my style of playing on a low G. Two of my favorite ukulele players, Brittany Piver and Timani Gardner, both are pretty much low G enthusiasts. In fact, Timani has two low G strings on a ukulele, so that's a, a super, super enthusiast of a low G. But I adore both their sounds and how they play it. It's just for my style of playing. Um, I, I don't find a low G useful. For those people who do find it useful, that low G then basically creates a lower bass note that you can add to your playing. So you get a deeper sound and it kind of increases the octave range on the ukulele as well. This creates a more linear tuning, just like again, the top four strings of guitar. So actually the strings in order from lowest to highest are four, three, two, one, G, C, E, A. If you have a high G ukulele and want to tune it to low G, you can't just tune the string down an octave because it will sound like shit. So instead you need basically a thicker gauge string and usually the wound metal. Here is my favorite choice of string uh, for low Gs and baritone low strings. It's the Ukelogic uh, gold smooth wound strings. So as I said, usually for a low G, you want a wound metal string. <laughs> So next up we have the DGBE of a baritone. So this weirdly is the same format as a low G, as in the fourth string is the lowest, the D, and then going DGBE. Um, but also a lot of people look at it as it's the same tuning as the top four strings of a guitar. Guitars are tuned E, A, D, G, B, E. And so we're just taking the DGBE strings from the guitar. 
Now, even though I do play guitar, I've never viewed a baritone as a guitar with two less strings. I literally view it as a low G, but tuned a fourth lower. So I would play a baritone exactly like I'd play a low G. And I think that's why I don't bother with low G, because if I want a lower tone, I will go to a baritone instead. And that's why I play. The low G for me is just not deep enough, I guess. So basically you'll either see me playing a high G uke or a baritone uke, and that's where I spend 50, 50% 50 of my time. The reason why baritones exist is because, because the notes are lower, they need to be stretched basically over a further distance. And that's why baritone ukes are bigger because they are tuned much lower. And on a baritone uke, we're taking the same octave from the low G. So we're taking that string, it's just now our third string, and then we're adding an even lower string of a D string. So often my favorite and is quite common is that a baritone will come with two wound strings which is two metal strings and basically that will be the d and the g both of those will be metal and then your other two strings the b and e can be nylon fluorocarbon whatever you use So next we have DGBE Reentrant, which is actually a high D baritone. So the closest that, if I see normal baritone as the same as low G, then DGBE Reentrant, high D baritone, is kind of the same as a high G ukulele, but it's just tuned a fourth lower. Again, what that means is you can sit there and play it just like you would a high G ukulele. It'd be no different. It's just that when you're playing a C chord, you're actually playing a G chord on the baritone. I haven't seen too many players playing high D baritones and um, it's actually one of my favorite sounds now that I play it more and more. And my Pono uke that I won from the ukulele site, thank you, love you, is a currently strong high D. And finally, we have this A, D, F sharp, B tuning, which like I said, is a mouthful and is more commonly known as D6 tuning. It's essentially a GCEA ukulele, but with a capo on the second fret. It's, that's it. The whole thing is tuned up a tone. Now, from my knowledge, this was popular basically in the mid 1900s, 1950s and stuff like that, and is more popular with kind of uh, the George Formby-esque kind of sound. And most books that are found for ukulele here in Scandinavia uh, are actually for D6 tuning, weirdly. So it was quite a popular one here in Europe also. You usually only find this on a soprano ukulele, and that's because, again, because the uh, scale is so short that the strings can be tuned up to, they've got some slack in the tension, so they can be tuned up a whole tone without them all exploding. What this results in is kind of a tighter sound and uh, some people say a louder sound, but in my experience, well, on my ukes, I haven't found it massively louder. But because I play tenors and I'm used to a higher tension, I really appreciate playing a D6 tuning on a soprano. I think it sounds amazing and feels amazing. Okay, so now we're going to talk about my five favorite alternate tunings and how they work differently on re-entrant ukes versus linear tuned ukes. Two quick points to make. First of all, because I use alternate tuning so much, for example, like in my standard set list when playing live, I have seven different tunings. Um, I use this lovely little device, which is called a Rode 3 Automatic Robot Tuning Thing TM. Basically what the Rode does, it kind of tunes for you. You pop it on the end of the tuning peg and then twists it to the note. The cool thing about it and what saves me all of the pain in the world is that you can save any tunings you like. You can also save all the tunings into different instruments. So for example, I have a high G, a low G, a baritone, a high D, uh, even electric guitar. For me, it's one of my favorite devices anyway that I use pretty much every single day. Um, if you want to ever know more about that, let me know in the comments. I can always make a video on it. Second quick point, um, often people don't try alternate tunings because they're scared of what it might do to their strings. Now, your strings can tolerate being tuned differently. Don't worry. It's within, I'd say, kind of a tone or maybe a tone and a half. Your strings can absolutely survive that. That's going down, going up. We push it a lot less, but basically when we retune our uke, all that's gonna happen is that your strings are gonna stretch back to their original, kind of the tuning that they're used to being sat in. So it means when you play around with alternate tunings, you it will go out of tune quite quickly. But if you're lucky enough to have more than one ukulele, I just recommend when playing around with tunings, use keep one in standard tuning that you're used to, and then take the other one and put it in the alternate tuning whilst you're playing around. 
That way you don't have to constantly flick between tunings and the uke will be used to set in that tuning. So far it's one of the biggest excuses I use for having so many ukuleles, but there are many more tunings I need to use, so I see need many more ukuleles. You do too? Cool, let's all use that excuse. Okay, let's talk about our first tuning. F, C, E, A. Now I call this tuning drop F and that's because we have to detune our G string a tone. So we're gonna tune our G string down to an F. Now that we've done that, let's have a quick listen to how it sounds. Cool. So this tuning works incredibly well in the key of F. So if you're playing a song that's in the key of F, or if you're writing music that's in the key of F, this tuning absolutely works perfectly because you can utilize what used to be a high G string now as a high F string and add it into your chords. Now I say high G, but this also works really well on low G and baritone too. It just provides a completely different feel. So for example, if we looked on the baritone, we'd have to drop our D string to a C. So we'd have C, G, B, E tuning, which I would call drop C on a baritone. Whenever I use this tuning with a low tuned ukulele, I kind of use that lowest note as like a pedal note. So everything kind of stays on that chord. And this is the exact tuning that I use in my own song, Sunshine. Next tuning, we go G, C, E flat, A. So for this tuning, we have to detune our E string, our second string to an E flat, but sometimes tuners are racist. So you might want to check that it's a D sharp. E flat and D sharp are the same note. Like I said, some tuners are just racist against flats. Right now we're in tune, let's have a little listen to this. Now, usually when we're in standard tuning on a ukulele, we're tuned basically to the key of C and we can play a nice C chord very easily. So including the E flat instead of the E, we're actually tuning to C minor rather than C major. I'm not a fan of a, a standard C minor chord on a ukulele, just because we have to emit the low C and I don't very much like it. I've spoken about this lots too much maybe. But um, basically with this tuning, if you play a regular C chord, it transforms that chord into a C minor chord instead. This tuning works perfectly on high and low G. And again, I use it on baritone. So for a baritone, we'd be tuning our second string B down to a B flat or A sharp if your tune is racist. You can hear this exact tuning on my track Overcast from my album as well. So tuning number three, we have G, B, E, A. So what we have to do here is we have to tune our third string, our C string down a semitone to B. This gives us a kind of uh, E minor chord and again, kind of more of a minor vibe. Right, now we're there, let's have a little listen.
Now for me, uh, this tuning is better on high G rather than low G. And the main reason is on a low G, you already have access to that B note. It would be the fourth fret of your G string. But with a high G, the C is our lowest note. So often when I'm playing a song that requires just that low B in the bass, just detune that C, perfect. As this tuning is pretty much an open E minor chord, um, it works very well with playing covers and writing songs in the key of E minor. I've used this tuning in far too many covers, but the ones that kind of stick in my brain is my cover of The Last of Us theme tune, and also uh, my original song Storm is also in this tuning. Number four is a weird one, F sharp, B, E, A. So for this tuning, we have we we still have the B from last time. So your C string, your third string is tuned down a semitone to a B, but also your G string is tuned down a semitone to an F sharp. Now we're tuned, let's go have a listen to this tuning. So I've tried this tuning on both high G and low G and baritone. And uh, for me personally, I can only make it sound good on a high G. I mainly use it for kind of uh, anything in the key of B minor because we have the B and the F sharp together. And when playing in this tuning, I like to keep the E string open. So basically the gap between an E and an F sharp is easily accessible. And again, on a high G ukulele, it means I can utilize it more for melody. My track Rain is all played in this tuning. And again, the harmonics intro everything to it. It's kind of just tuned to like a B minor-ish chord. So uh, that's what's giving that sound. And that's how I'm getting away with playing so many open strings. Okay, so our last tuning is a real fun one. We're gonna go G, B, D, G. This tuning requires the most retuning of strings. So the G string, fourth string, you'll leave it alone. The C string, down a semitone to B. Your E string, second string, down to a D. That's a whole tone lower. And then your first string, your A string, also goes down a whole tone to G. Right, now we're in tune. Let's go have a listen to how it sounds. So this is quite a popular tuning and the main reason is is because we've tuned every string to a note from our G chord. A G major chord is G, B and D and actually across the board at the moment we've got G, B, D, G meaning that just with one strum I have a G major chord already. This kind of tuning is often referred to as an open tuning and is kind of what's used in a uh, slack key guitar. So um, if you think of Jeff Peterson or anybody like that, these are the kind of tunings that those players are using. I find this tuning equally as fun on high and low G. So um, even though on the high G we have double, basically the same string for the fourth and the first, I find it makes no difference. So I can still play melodies on the A string whilst not sacrificing getting rid of a G on the open G string. We can achieve the exact same sound on a baritone, but rather than open G, we'd have open D. And so for baritone, we end up with D, F sharp, A, D. And again, a D major chord is D, F sharp, and A. So we basically have an open D chord, D, F sharp, A, D. Because of how it's tuned, uh, it means that your scale shapes are identical on the second and first string. So it makes it quite a friendly kind of tuning to play in because your scales look identical on both strings. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I talk about scales on one string, or you want to find some pieces of music that are in these tunings, or you just want lessons on these tunings and theory, then maybe consider checking out my Four String Friends membership. If you're enjoying all the ukulele content, but you're kind of frustrated by your own ukulele journey, feeling stuck, need some guidance, then please look at my Four String Friends membership on my website.
Fostering Friends is a place where all of my live lessons are collated. So each month we have four brand new live lessons added every single month. You can join these lessons live with me on Zoom and all the other students, or you can watch them back at your own pace whenever you like. If you want to improve your ukulele playing, understanding and play like I do, then please come and join Fostering Friends. Please check my website down below. And there we have it. So hopefully this means the next time you encounter a piece of music on the ukulele that is in an alternate tuning, you won't be too afraid of it, okay? Ukuleles survive. They're meant to be kind of taken in different tunings. So don't avoid pieces like that, but also have a play with it yourself. You might find some sounds and it might transform the ukulele into something that you never thought possible. There's a small upcoming player called James Hill who basically talks about one of his favorite tunings uh, that's a B-E-B-E -B -E tuning, which obviously we're always going to pronounce Bebe. Uh, that's on the baritone, but if you want to recreate the same thing, it's E-A-E-A -E -A on a standard G-tuned ukulele. If you enjoyed the video, I thought it is, it's all right, then uh, please consider liking it down there. And if you're already not subscribed to the channel, please do. I always talk about lots of ukulele stuff, whether it's ukulele reviews, I've got some covers, or again, talking about how I personally am tackling the ukulele and how I see it. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm always happy to talk. Uh, I'm a full-time teacher, so I love talking about all this stuff. Have a lovely day. Until next time.